When Google first expanded maps to India in 2008, there was a problem. Imagine, you're in Pune, India, and you wake up hoping to get some aloo paratha for breakfast. You route to the closest paratha restaurant, and you see this. Huh? Street names were the foundation of Google Maps. But in India at that time, nobody used street names. Many streets did not have names or had multiple names. This was before phones had accurate GPS, so unless you had a physical compass with you telling you how far you've traveled, directions on Google Maps were pretty much useless. Also, this problem was not unique to India. In Japan, most streets don't have names. Instead, people navigate with numbers and city blocks. It's the same in Mannheim, Germany. Cool, we're adding letters to numbers now, but everything is still measured in blocks. For those places, street names weren't really a thing. That's a problem for Google Maps, and they better fix it quick. Starting with India, this is how Google Maps addressed the street name problem. Dude. Last week was tough. So many fire drill projects. Yeah, let's hope this week is chill. Anyway, any news to share? Anyone? Anyone? I taught my puppy to sit. Aww. Cool. I baked cookies for my nephew. Wow. <gasps> Maps does not work in India. Aww. Wow. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, it's bad. Fire drill, fire drill. Bruh. Ah! This is Olga, a UX researcher. And this is Janet a UX designer. It was their job to solve India's street name problem. These Googlers knew that people around the world used landmarks to navigate. For instance, one might say, oh, you want to get alu paratha? Okay, okay. Over there, yeah. Walk past that store with the evil cat, turn left, keep going straight, and turn right at the water fountain. Wait, how do people use landmarks to navigate in India? What types of landmarks help navigate anyway? To answer these two questions, Olga and Janet boarded a flight, flew to India, and started to find the answer in kind of a scrappy way. Here's what happened. They called businesses and asked them for directions to their stores. They asked people to draw diagrams for familiar routes. And they even followed people around as they navigated unfamiliar places. Although the plan was kind of scrappy, a bit DIY. It worked. Here's why. Through this hands-on ground field research, they found that navigating India involved four critical things. Number one, orientation. Head towards the water. Number two, description of a turn. Turn just past the big bazaar. Number three, confirmation of the right path. You'll see a patrol station on the right. And number four, error correction. If you get to the roundabout, you've gone too far. With these four elements, the team worked several iterations for Google Maps. And this is the final solution. It took full advantage of landmarks. For example, additional cues were included, such as pass by, insert landmark. They also very subtly included road names when it was available. You can actually see this for yourself right now. On your laptop, your phone, go to Google Maps and set directions from, say, Nagpur to Mumbai. You'll see these pass-by directions in blue text. If you set directions in a place that do not rely on landmarks as much, like the United States, chances are these additional cues disappear. That's because the US uses street names and address numbers as its main navigational cue. So here, Google successfully localized maps. They made a global, very popular product fit local users and their needs. Whether you're building an app, a website, software, and you want to make sure that users will actually use it, you want to do user research. And you don't need to test with fancy equipment or five-year longitudinal studies. Janet and Olga shows that sometimes the most scrappy methods are the best methods. As a UX designer, when I'm localizing a design, I might ask, how can I get as close as living the life of the user as possible? What struggles do they actually face? And how are they already working around a problem that I'm trying to solve? In this case for Google Maps, it's the use of landmarks. To better localize products and solve real problems, the key is to ask the right questions, know who to ask, and have answers inform a tailored solution. The source of this video is Elizabeth Laraki, former UX design lead for Google Maps.